Hey everybody, this is Mike at Crash Bushcraft. Guess what? We're getting ready to start this series off. What I wanted to do was, was make this the most simplest way to do it without going into top end gear and exploding our minds with every website that I can think of to buy that gear that you need for bushcraft. Well, guess what? Bushcraft, to me, what I've learned over these few years of stumbling, and that's what I've done, I've stumbled across it by accident and didn't understand what I was doing and then I went back resources so what we're gonna do is we are going to start this series off with something simple something for the very beginning bushcrafter the person that has not went out and done anything but has already looked at every website for the best canteen the best everything here's something that will help you before all of the websites came out, we didn't have that. You know, we were lucky if we got a catalog in the mail from Field and Stream and we found something generally it existed of maybe a knife, you know, um, some cheap cook set that we just had to save up our pennies for and then we finally got it and then we found out Mama's stuff was much better, you know. So before you go blowing up into buying tons of gear, here's something to start with. Go somewhere local. I am about 45 minutes total time from my house if I walked it. Total time. I'm less than 15 miles up on top of a ridge. It's simple. So what I want you to do is, or what I suggest to get started in it, is learn your surroundings. And that's what we're going to do today. We have a few minutes before daylight is ended. The sunset will be coming out and the critters will start coming up. Take what you're comfortable with to get you home. A cell phone with a good signal is going to help you tremendously. I agree, technology is very blessed to have it these days. It can help you out. Go out and be as safe as possible, but go somewhere that you can just listen. Go out somewhere to where you can see things with your eyes, your perspective, and what resources are available to gather. That is the first step in learning to be an outdoors person. If you've not gotten there, whether you want to do bushcraft or you want to be called a woodsman or whether you want to do primitive skills, you need to know your surroundings and what is available. So let's take a quick look at getting some fire resources. Here we have a very simple easy gather in the winter time this one here is not quite 100 percent ready but it will get you notice how brittle it can be see all those little tiny fibers those things will ignite quickly you want to listen for a snap this one is not 100 percent ready but today i'm not making a fire but if I wanted to, we'll take it, we'll fold it. Now once I have it folded, we're gonna lose a lot of the fluff. But those little tiny twigs are gonna dry up over time. And the drier they get, the better they ignite. So let's look for something else. Now, you see that? Some more resources that we can gather up. We just need the end off of it. As you can see, there's three more and there's a whole lot of them out there. We're just gonna grab three today, plus the one which will give us four. Here's some more resources of the same stuff. So we'll grab us up some of those. Notice I'm only getting the tops off of the ragweed. That one there was almost a snapper. As you can see, we've got some more. Some more, as you can see right here. These here are getting closer We'll get you closer to it. This here is more of something that you would find in the winter already closer. We're in the early fall. Well, not even quite fall yet, but 
and snapped a little bit. But we're still going to gather all of this. A lot of times we're looking on the ground for fat wood and we're looking for different pieces. But we don't a lot of times think of this piece here. I'm going to let this one be. There seems to be a, a sprout that's growing out of it. Maybe it'll come back up. But you can find fat wood in amongst get it here and get it broke apart you'll find it especially close to these knots and there it is clean this off to show you that although it's wet this when dried all of that resin is right there inside of that knot now I'm not saying you got to go out and do all of this here because fat wood is plentiful here where I'm at but this little chunk right here Just set it home, let it dry out. We'll give you plenty of fire once you get it going. That's the little piece. This is a solid piece inside of there. This is gonna be put in my little thing here for right now, and it's for a later use. As you can see, it's starting to get dark. It get dark real quick, but we're gonna be putting some of these just dried up sticks, twigs, not sticks, they're basically, I'm not sure of the name of these, but we're going to put these up. We're gathering up a good bit of them because they're very thin. We'll drop off some of the green so we don't have to worry about them i'll look that up if you just need to know and tell you but you may already know i don't care what i'm getting i just know what i need to get okay guys so what we ended up with is future fire getting ready for as some call it the next fire this right here with a little bit of dried grasses, whether it's a big lighter, whether it's a flint and steel, whether it's fire from a ferrocium rod, well, you will be able to get fire as long as you've gathered some others. But what I wanted to do with this whole video for the introductory is, is to go ahead and let people know. The key is, is get out, do something. Don't just sit and look on the keyboard at all the internet sites. You're not gonna learn anything by looking to see what's the best gear. I can promise you, without a shadow of a doubt, I have had or I still have the best gear that you can probably buy on the market that I have seen and found. It has gotten me nowhere. I have not slept comfortable in $350 hammocks. I've not slept comfortable on $125 air mattresses. I've not slept comfortable on some of the tents that I've purchased. For me, I'm comfortable on a cot or on the ground. Um, a good air mattress on the ground, I can move around, do what I want to. I don't like to be restricted. But the point is, is I came out this afternoon, I spent about 30 minutes before daylight had ended. And as you can see, it's getting very dark and it may be too dark for the video. So I've got to hurry us up. I came out to gather some resources. That is bushcraft. I'm not sitting behind the computer buying as much stuff as you can. Do you need that stuff? Eventually, yes, you will. 
but until you know how to live without it, don't go buy it. So I hope you guys like this. I hope I don't hurt any feelings because that's not my intention. That's really to help you, to help you understand you don't have to have a ton of money to enjoy the great outdoors. Don't look at all the endorsements that are out there. They need the money. I appreciate it. I love their videos. I like to watch their videos and I understand why they have to do it. I do. I have plenty of sponsors that's offered. I don't want any of them. I want to be able to come out here and enjoy it and not have to be working for my sponsor. I mean, if I want to work for a sponsor, I'm going to go and put in an extra three hours at work and guarantee you my overtime will pay twice the amount that they're going to give me in free gear that I can't even go use because I'm not enjoying it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be looking up for some future videos that are coming up. They've already been made. Um, but I just wanted you to see I needed a new introductory video to get me to where I needed to be. So appreciate all the likes, subs, subscribers, everybody that's came on board here. I hope I can teach you something. I hope I can learn something from you guys because we're all in this together. So thanks for watching. Thank you.